book I would tell you about. Because Johnny, uh, now this is, I was too little to go, but Papa and Johnny and Ellick and Virgil, his cousins, and Shorty Quimby. And which one went on the rodeo? All of them did. I mean, Mac Like made world champion bronc rider. Who did? Mac Mike. Like. Mac. Jim Like. Yeah, Jim. Yeah. But yeah, that, that, that one that, that, that Levi's had a had a sticker on the pocket. Yeah. Yeah. That might go ahead and we can go back to that. Don't world champion bronc rider. Yeah, don't let me get don't we we'll, we'll only go to that story, but let's get this other one out first. What the fuck you know, popping them, were they all getting up a posse, or what were they doing? Well, they was they was driving Shorty Quimby's cattle to yeah. uh, Rocky Ford, Colorado, to put them on the train. Good. And they they topped out there about ten or twelve miles from London, and it's real flat right through there. You can see forever. And and Johnny was a squirming. Oh, he was squirming. He had to go to the bathroom real bad. And there was be a car coming, and then a car coming. He had to score real bad and he put up with it for a long time. He started to get off and here come a car. He started to get off and here come a car. And directly, he just squatted down, got his shirt and unbuttoned and pulled it up over his head, went ahead and did his business. <laughs> Papa said, good God, Johnny D. He said, I, he said, I had to go or wash my pants That's out. Right. He said, they couldn't tell my ass from nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I don't tell you. Pretty fun. They were pretty cute. They're pretty smart, really. But well, I mean, he, had, he didn't have no choice. I, I mean, he know, had to go. There's times that I won't, we won't go there. But we won't you, go there. I know so but many Madison times. Madison got to laugh at me one day, my granddaughter. Yeah. She got to laugh at me one day. I, but, but anyway. But there's so many times, you know, when women are around, you got to. Yeah. You got to do this. Shield, shield your horse. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But it's just a nature, you know, and you don't really. Yeah. You don't really think anything about it, you know, it's just, it just, a lot of funny things. He said they got right there, what's it called, middle water, and this guy had a, a field out there, and that stuff planted and everything, you know, and this big old deep canyon come across there, and uh, he told us, you ain't going through that there, cabin. Was that a Farmer Henry or? Yeah. Okay. Them damn he, said, you, he said, that's my, you can't go through that damn cabin. <laughs> and Papa said, we got to, we got to get them to, you ain't go through there. He says, well, hell, if we, if we go around and head this game, he said, that'll add 20 miles. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, they're sitting there visiting about it all and then, and uh, Johnny and Ellick and Shorty Quimby and all of them were back with the cattle. Pretty soon Papa come back and waved them on and he'd cut the fence and put the cattle through it. So that guy was laying there on the ground. And then uh, they got they got through and Papa patched the fence back up. And he says, I better go see about him. And he rode back over there and said that guy was set, sitting there rubbing his chin. Rubbing his chin. And <laughs> Papa left him some money, I don't know how much, but yeah. to try to pay for yeah. his, yeah. help pay for his crop. Apologize to him, but they had to, they didn't have to, they had to go through yeah. that. Yeah. And, and that guy didn't, he didn't try to shoot him or nothing, he just, but they yeah. tried to make it right best they yeah. could. Yeah. Well, that's all you can do, you know. yeah. that's all you can do. All of a sudden, they come riding from Clayton, New Mexico, they took the cattle to Tex line. They put him on the train and was riding back home. They hit a norther facing into a blizzard. And uh, he said, oh my gosh, he's about to freeze to death. And he said, they come by that, what's now the Price Ranch. And they had a nice big headquarters, nice barns and everything. And Papa said, Grandpa told him, says, we gotta, we gotta spend the night. Can we use your, can we use your barn? Yeah. He said, no, you ain't using my board. He pulled a gun on him and run him off. Hush. He went on to say that. Like that a and, it was, and it was in the blizzard. So Papa said they they went on and he said, directly they smelt smoke. So they followed their noses and they found this little old 
rock house. He said it wasn't 20 foot square. And there was a man and his wife and two kids. There was Mexicans lived in that house. He said, uh, that old Mexican come out there and took care of their horses, put them in a, under a shed and fed them, and brought them in the house, and made them ride it home. And the storm blowed over the next day and they started to leave. And he wouldn't take no money. And Grandpa tried to pay him, he wouldn't take no money. So Papa gave, or Grandpa would give Papa some money and he said, uh, you better go get a drink of water. And he put that in his hand. He said, uh, yeah. put that under the milk bucket, mm -hmm. uh, under the water bucket the with the dipper in it. Mm -hmm. so he, but he said, them people give them everything they had. Everything they had you know, was theirs. The, 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 the old Mexicans was out of water. And they, they, they was really, really nice people. Yeah. And them people that had it all wouldn't even let us so, say it. I mean, that's. He said, they, if they hadn't found that, that froze to death. That I froze to death. Mm -hmm. it, it really, diff, different world. It's just a different world. Yeah. Grandpa was pretty good with the rope. He was awful good with the rope. Yeah. He said that. Well, I remember one time he stopped, listened, looked up through there, and then he cut his rope down, started up through there. Directly he went over and under that old horse, he went down through there, directly he had an old doll on the end of the rope, he caught a deer. And uh, when we got down to him, well, he cut her head off, the wife and his blade of his pocket knife, mm -hmm. and sort of off the washer. Darn things give the cattle ticks, and you know them mule deer got ticks all over. Yeah, really but he was really good with the rope. Uh, one time, he about the same thing going through the cedar trees. Reckon he just flogged his old horse and went out through there. He roped the nagle uh -uh. around one wing and his head yeah. there, dropped his head in. That was sitting on a dead cow there. Yeah. The lightning yeah. killed or something. Yeah. But he had seen that through them cedar trees, mm -hmm. and that old eagle was so taken off. Oh, yeah, big he was. And he caught him. And then, what in the hell did he do with him? Isn't what I want to know? Chopped his head in, killed him. I don't know why. Why did he rope him? I don't know why. I don't know neither. Was I, 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 I mean, I, your dad killed that damn eagle or something yeah. though. I'm mean, yes. flopping around the end of my rope. Do you? We're just crossing the ridge there, Grandpa. Horses went to sort, and he was looking around directly. He looked around, rode on around there, and there was a dead yearling colt laying there. Cat? Colt. I know, but the cat get him or what? Yeah, the lion had just killed him. Yeah. There was blood still running out of his. They run that line off when. They run the line off when they rode up on yeah. it. Yeah. And they said that Grandpa got. He always had a little bottle of strychnine with him. It was poison cows and yep. wolves and lions and bears. They had to. Yep. Yep. Anyways, he, uh, there was a big pool of blood come out there where the jerker vein was bleeding. Just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It said he got his, some of that strychnine and mixed it in there with his pocket knife and he cut a, a couple of places and put strychnine in there. And they said, uh, when, when they come back there the next morning, through there, that lion was laying right there, just right close to him. So he got him. He, he killed one of them. I told you, funny story. So they was it, that. This is a uh, Elmer Kelton. You know, rider. And if you, you, you read much, Henry, you still see. Well, not anymore. I know. I just got my eyes fixed last week. That's right. And and I can. See better, but they said I, these trifocals don't work. Yeah, it's hard to read the small print. Yeah, but colors has changed and they're more vivid. Well, that's a good thing, man. And everything like well, that. Well, that's gonna get better and better. And this this eye, by shooting, I still, I still, of course, yeah. I, I I'll shoot with both eyes wide open. Yeah. I never do. They're, I never they, they're, fat, they're teaching that man here. But I always teach a place off to shoot with both eyes. Open. Both eyes wide open. I, I never do squint to shoot. But but oh. Uh, it's down that San Angelo, that down that damn sheep country. 
you know, and they got a, they got an old old dog coyote that that uh, you know, I could tell by the way he's leaving his markings and all. And he, he killing them sheep. And uh, so the rancher he calls the trapper to come out there trap yeah. them trap the cows. Yeah, yeah, trap them cows. And uh, uh, you know, they got net wire fences around them sheep. You know, and they gotta dig over it or under it or something and yeah. get them cows to get in. Anyway, the trapper set his traps and he, he called that old boy, went by his house and picked him up and said, uh, he got in a truck with that well that trapper said he couldn't hardly stand the smell, you know, he didn't, it, yeah. it, it, you know how they was in the old days, they didn't bathe, they didn't they didn't look to it, they didn't look to it. That's right. So uh said that uh 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 they went down the trap the trap line, you know, and they see what they dug out and they say, Oh well, but the last one that cow took his head on top of <laughs> just left him up on that trap set, you know. But <clears> the <throat> old trapper was in town later on, you know, and a week or two later and there's a lady stopped him on the street and said, You're a murderer. And he said he said he liked to follow the backer. I said, excuse me, ma'am. She said, you're a murderer. I said, you kill them cows. You trap them cows. You kill them cows. And they tried to tell her about all them dead sheep laying out there. And she wouldn't have, you wouldn't listen to nothing about it. Yeah. You know, you're a murderer. You're a murderer. And uh, he said, well, have you ever set a mouse trap? You're just trying to change the subject. You know, I mean, that's about how these tree hugging liberal son of guns are nowadays. I mean, you know, if you shoot a cow, you're done. You know, well, you kill them when you're done. But they don't seem the calves and the, and the, and, and now them cows won't bother them folds much. It's self self preservation. Yeah, absolutely it is. And I had I enjoy what I was doing. I do too. I do too. I know. Uh, I enjoy hunting. You know, one of these ranches called me. I might go sit out there for two or three weeks. Before we ever set a trap. with a problem, and, and I, I liked it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really liked yeah. it. Well, it's you matching your wits. You matching your wits against oh. nature. That's what you're doing. You know. All right, let's get on back to the rodeo now. Mike, Mike, uh, Matt rode at Madison Square Garden, right? Yeah. Okay. Tell, tell that, tell that story. How old was you? How old was Matt? He's your uncle. So Matt that, was probably. Uh, now, Papa, start back. Where did he that, was Papa's age. So, so they were brothers. Mac was Papa's first cousin. Okay, okay. How did they what, wind what, up on the side of the river, or what? How that? One of Papa's brothers. Yeah. They they settled that country. So uh, well, remounts for the army. Yeah, I know. But she told me that whenever one of them went across the river, the your daddy did, right? That, that was my. Uh, Granddad. Grandpa's that been grandpa's dad. Okay. But he went on across the river. Yeah. And the other brother stayed on the Yeah, he said he on the north side. And drowned it, drowned his wife and kids. He yeah. went across there. Yeah. He stayed okay, there. okay. So from and that lineage right there, where did this go? How did Mac come in? Well they they, they, they all settled in there around uh the huh? Back this side of the between the Hunter and Clayton. Yeah, New Mexico. Okay. okay. In the New Mexico Badlands, Black Mesa. That's where you were, wasn't it? That's, that's where I was raised. Yeah. But anyways, that's where they throw that together. Okay. And uh, there's a old dugout, old set up there. That's on the, there's a rock right by the door that's got Ike carved in it, which is my grandpa's name. There's an old Model T car, part of it, still sitting there. I want to go get it, what's left of it. Well, hell, let's go. And uh, Doherty's, I've known them, they were never the ranches all my life. I'm sure they'd let me have it. Well, Colin, we'll go first of the week. I'd like to bring that. Uh, anyway. Somehow, uh, get it restored get or something. Yeah, you know. yeah, get a trailer and go get it. We'll get there, put it on, how and that big is it? Grandma well, was. Henry, how big is that thing? Oh. I mean, you could pick up either end of the motor end in it. Well, I mean, well, my, my bed on my truck's nine and a half foot long. Well, it'll fit in the back of my pickup. Well, we can take my truck, that ton so, truck, and go anyway. But I, I'd like to get that over. Well, we'll do it. We'll do it.
been adventurous. They were showing them. that country. They were showing the town to the bank, and that's Papa's older sister, and her husband, and Grandpa, and Grandma. And they, they had this old model, a cherry car. Anyways, Grandma was sitting in the front. And this might have been a Model B, a 32, I think. But anyways, it had a, a radio on it. And it was static and everything. They were getting pretty close. To, they talked out there. You could hear, hear the radio. And she was trying to find, find that radio. That's when they first started putting radios on it. Yeah. And she had her arm through the steering wheel. Yeah. Turning that butt. Yeah. And they come to that corner and her arm was through there and they couldn't turn, so the car turned over. Oh, Lord, no. On the side. And they, Grandpa was sitting on the outside and it cut his ear off. Oh. And uh, it was hanging down there by the. Skin. Anyways, they they got a couple of fence posts and pried that car back up and got it on its wheels and drove it on into town. And they took Grandpa by. Doctor. Oh, Dr. Winchester, he sewed his ear back on. Did it stay? Yeah, it growed. And then Uncle Raymond got the hiccups. Now, was this Max's brother Raymond? Raymond, this would be uh, Papa's oldest sister's boy. Husband. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And he kept hiccuping and hiccuping and hiccuping. And he got so sore that when he'd hiccup, he just Oh, we fed him over so. Grandpa rode down and got Catherine and Ray and said, We got to take him to the doctor. You know, we got to, we yeah. got to get him to the doctor. So they, they got him in the car and started to win into old Dr. Winchester. He was a little little dried up guy, pretty about like old Sam Thompson, about the way I was. But, anyways. Punch. Yeah, about like Fox a little bitty guy. But, anyways. And he was also the undertaker. Yeah. You know, he, he, he came off. But anyways, they couldn't get the hiccup and stop. So he told Raymond, he said, stick your tongue out. And he said, Uncle Raymond stuck his tongue out a little ways. He said, no, I mean stick it out. So finally Uncle Raymond stuck it on out and he grabbed hold of that with that towel. Got over his son and he tried to yank it plumb out of his head. Gosh, Henry. And they said that Raymond built to him and tried to catch him in that office running around. He said, hold it, Raymond, hold it, hold it, hold it. Raymond says, I'll be down. Give him, give him some money and walk out the door. His income was stopped. <laughs> oh, wasn't that something? His income was stopped.